Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to go through a quick review of multiplying and dividing decimals. This should be helpful for anyone looking for a quick refresher, whether you're in middle school, high school, college, continuing your education as an adult, really, no matter what class or goal you are working towards, here are some examples to help you out. We'll start with multiplying decimals. Let's jump into number one, where we have six and seven tenths times four. Now the first thing that we're going to do when we have a multiplication problem that involves decimals, we're going to remove any decimals within the problem. So we're going to multiply just like we would if we had whole numbers. Let's set this up and rewrite number one as 67 times four. So again, remove any decimals. We're going to worry about placing the decimal in our answer once we multiply. So once we remove the decimals, we can multiply. So we'll start with four times seven, which is 28. So carry that two, and then we have four times six, which is 24, plus that two is 26. Now we're done multiplying, so we can place our decimal in our answer. So we take a look at the original problem and see how many digits are behind or are to the right of a decimal. Well, one, we have this seven right here to the right of a decimal. So our answer is going to have one digit to the right or behind the decimal. So one digit would be this eight. So we can place our decimal in between the six and the eight. Our final answer, 26 and eight tenths. Let's move on to number two, where we have five and 21 hundredths times three and eight tenths. So let's remove the decimals and rewrite this problem. So 521 times 38. Now we're ready to multiply. So eight times one is eight. Eight times two is 16. Put our six, carry the one. And then eight times five is 40, plus that one is 41. So we are done with the eight and we are done with this carried one. So we're going to move over to the three. We're moving one place value to the left. So we need our placeholder zero here. And now we multiply starting with three times one, which is three. Three times two is six. And then three times five is 15. Now we add so eight plus zero is eight. Six plus three is nine. One plus six is seven. Four plus five is nine. And then we have a one. So once we get to this point, we look at our original problem and see how many digits are to the right or are behind a decimal. Well, this two would be one, this one would be two, and then this eight would be three. So we have one, two, three digits behind or to the right of a decimal. So our answer needs three digits to the right of the decimal. So we have one, two, three digits. Our decimal is going to go between the nine and the seven. Our final answer, 19 and 798 thousandths. So there you have it. There's a quick review of multiplying decimals. Remove the decimals, multiply as you normally would with whole numbers, and then place your decimal in the answer. Look at the original problem, see how many digits are to the right or are behind a decimal, and then your answer is going to match that. Let's move on to division. Here are our examples of dividing decimals. Let's jump into number one, where we have 85 and 8 tenths divided by six. Now the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to set the problem up and place our decimal. 
For number one, we have 85 and 8 tenths for our dividend. That's the number we are dividing. So it goes under our division bar. So let's write out 85 and 8 tenths. And then we are dividing by our divisor of 6. So the divisor is the number we are dividing by. Once we get to this point and we are set up, we have a very important question. Is our divisor a whole number? If yes, our decimal goes straight up into our answer. For number one, our divisor is whole. We have a six. So let's bring that decimal straight up into our answer. So our decimal is placed and we are ready to move on. Now I do wanna mention for number two, we will see what happens when we do not have a whole number for our divisor. So once we bring that decimal straight up into our answer, we can divide as we normally would with whole numbers. So we're going to use the same division process that we use with whole numbers. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, repeat. So let's start with divide. So we have eight divided by six. How many whole groups of six are in eight? Well, one. Then we multiply, one times six is six. Subtract, eight minus six is two. And then we bring down. Now we repeat, so divide. 25 divided by six. How many whole groups of six in 25? Well, four. Multiply, four times six, 24. Subtract, we get one. And then bring down our eight. So we repeat now, we go back to divide. 18 divided by six. How many whole groups of six in 18? Three. Multiply, three times six is 18. Subtract, we get a nice clean cut zero there and we are done. We went all the way over to our furthest place value to the right. In the case of number one, that's going to be the tenths place. And then we get that clean cut zero so we don't have anything left over. We do not need to continue the problem. Now for number two, we'll see what happens once we go all the way over and we do not get that zero there at the bottom once we subtract. But for number one, we are done. Our final answer, 14 and 3 tenths. Let's move on to number two where we have 3 and 94 hundredths divided by four tenths. So we need to set this up. Three and 94 hundredths is our dividend, the number we are dividing, and we are dividing by four tenths. So once we're set up, we need to see if our divisor is whole. Well, four tenths is not a whole number, so we cannot bring the decimal straight up quite yet. If our divisor is not whole, we need to make it whole. Making the divisor a whole number gives us the ability to go through our division steps and it's going to place our decimal for us in our answer. It's pretty cool how this works out. In order to make our divisor whole, we need to move the decimal once to the right, which means we are multiplying it by 10. So let's move this decimal once to the right. Now, in order to keep this problem balanced, whatever we do to the outside, the divisor, we must do to the inside, the dividend. Again, this keeps the problem balanced and equivalent. Let's move the decimal once on the inside as well, so multiplying the dividend by 10 also. Once we get to this point, we need to rewrite the problem with the whole divisor and the decimal placed. So we have four for our divisor, and then 39 and four tenths for our dividend. Now, is our divisor whole? Yes, so we can bring our decimal straight up. Now it's placed where we need to have it in our answer, and we can go through our division process. Now we start with divide, so we have three divided by four. 
how many whole groups of four are in three? Well, we can't do that, so we need to move over and use that nine as well and work with 39. So we have 39 divided by four. How many whole groups of four are in 39? Well, nine, that gets us to 36. So let's write this nine above the 39 there, not above the three, make sure it goes above the 39, the nine and 39, because we used both of those digits for our divide step. Now we multiply, so nine times four, 36, subtract, we get three. Then we bring down and repeat. So we have 34 divided by four. How many whole groups of four in 34? Well, eight, that gets us to 32. So eight times four, 32, subtract, we have two. Now we went all the way over to the furthest place to the right, but we do not have a zero at the end there once we subtract it. We do not want to put nine and eight tenths remainder two. We want to keep this in decimal form for the whole problem. So what we need to do, we need to work until we get a clean cut zero there at the end, and that's going to be our completed problem. So we need to put something on the end of this decimal to bring down and continue our process. So what can we put on the end of our decimal that will not change the value of that decimal? Well, a zero. Remember, zeros to the right of a decimal do not change the value of that decimal. So we can use a zero here and bring that down in order to continue our process. So we brought down the zero. Now we repeat, we go back up to divide. So we have 20 divided by four. How many whole groups of four are in 20? Well, five. That hits 20 exactly. And we can extend that bar there. Now we multiply, five times four is 20. And now we have that clean cut zero. We went all the way over. We needed to use a placeholder zero in order to continue our process, which is perfectly fine. And then we worked to get that clean cut zero and our final answer in decimal form. And that is going to be nine and 85 hundredths. So there you have it. There's how you multiply and divide decimals. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.